How's it going guys? Welcome to episode number two of Animation Power Tips. So on episode number one, we covered how to set up your Maya for animation. Get it all cozy and nice for you to animate. If you haven't watched that, watch that first before you get into this one because this is going to be sequential and every episode is going to help you a little bit more. So go and watch that one. I'll leave a link down below if you haven't and then jump onto this one. Now this one is going to be about setting up your hotkeys for you to animate, the best way to set them up. Hopefully it will give you guys some ideas on how to set up your own hotkeys. And this is part of a series that will keep on going. This series is sponsored by Autodesk. Having said all that, let's jump in the computer and get started with the second episode. Oh, and by the way, don't forget to like and subscribe if you like this content. Also, drop a comment down below and let me know what you think. Now, let's do it. <laughs> Sitting down, getting comfy, and getting ready to actually kind of uh, set up these shortcuts the best way possible. Every animator that I've met throughout my career works in a different way, everyone works in a different way. So because of this, guaranteed, even if you actually copy the stuff that I'm gonna do next, most likely in due time, you're just gonna start tweaking your things and putting your own shortcuts and doing your, th your stuff. So we actually are in our Maya just with the same display that we got from episode one. So things are looking very neat, very clear, which is nice. So uh, first thing you need to do is go up to here on Windows and on settings and preferences, you have the hotkey editor. Now, this is something that Autodesk um, added from Maya 2018, I believe. This is the one that I'm using right here. And it's a much better hotkey editor than before it was less visual last time as you can see here in every single like every single key is mapped out and you can see what every key does now a few things here hot tips um, you can actually uh, look at what each hotkey does by selecting search by hotkey and then selecting the hotkey for example T and it will tell you what T does exactly thinking about hotkeys as an animator the there's a few things that you do all the time that become repetitive that you want to eradicate. I'm going to uh, open a scene quickly that I have here. So yeah, so basically you do a lot of this. You change from translate to rotate as you go along. So those keys by default are really well set, W and E. So those should work straight out the bat. Now, um, you also scrub the timeline a lot, as I mentioned last time, as you, as you go through fine, you can do that by hand, but you have to go from key to key. So that's the other thing you do, right? So going from key to key. Now, Maya comes with default keys to go from key to key, which is actually uh, these two keys here, this one and that one. So it's comma and period. And when you press those, those two keys, you should be able to go key before and key after. Now, when you actually are down here, and it's a shame that I don't have a top-down camera, I need to set that up. <laughs> so your hand spends most of, the, of, of its time here. So you wanna make sure that your hand or your hotkeys are set on this side of the keyboard. The problem with having the key next and key previous on um, period and comma is that your hand has to travel from all the way from the left to the right of the keyboard to uh, do previous and next and continuously be here and then move all the way back to this side of the keyboard again. So that's a lot of traveling. You're already using this hand for the mouse. So obviously you're not gonna use this hand to go in. You're gonna use the left hand. So you're gonna go from this place to this place all the time. So instead of using that, I use uh, X and C as my previous and next key. Now, in order for you to actually change that um, from these two keys here to X and C, you have to, uh, you can do it the easiest way most likely is for you to qu query where is, uh, what does comma do? In this case, if you actually press comma with nothing else, it does a previous key. So you're gonna change that from comma to X. 
and it will tell you would you like to uh, change uh, X from going from grid snap press to whatever you want to do. You say yes if you're an animator. So that's that key assigned. Now you're going to query about uh, the period uh, key, which does the next key. Once again, uh, you want to assign the C key to that in order to make sure that you get that. So now you save and I'm pressing C and I'm going from previous to next. And that is really, really useful. Now that we have like previous and next, uh, we need to set a few other keys. Um, something that is incredibly useful is play blasting. So uh, you can uh, select runtime command or application command and query play blast. Play blast. And the play blast is set normally, it should be set to nothing. But um, I like to set it to um, number, key number one. Let me just save and close, make sure that is all good. Which means that if you actually uh, press one, you get play blast. So you have to press one key and you get a play blast. That saves you a bunch of time because normally what you have to do is right click, go to play blast and then play blast. That's actually two clicks that you have to do in order to see your play blast. So having just one quick uh, key that allows you to play blast your pre preview is a massive win. Now there's two more things that I want you to set up that will be useful for the next video, but not quite yet. And I'll tell you why, I'll give you a quick resume, but I'll be able to show you only in the next video. So let's go back to uh, settings and preferences and go back to hotkey editor. Okay, so I have here the hotkey editor. Um, now, going back to that idea of like, what do you do the most as an animator? When you go to your graph editor, let me just open my graph editor real quick and close that so I can explain exactly what I mean. The things that you do the most in your graph editor, normally you delete a lot of keys and you add keys as you go along, right? So once again, your hand needs to be around here and you're gonna go back to here on delete backspace in order to delete a key from your graph editor and then going back to here so you can uh, continue animating. So if you have to delete a lot of keys, so if you're polishing, um, you have to constantly go going like this and then going back to the left and then select another key and do the same or select a few keys and do backspace and delete all those keys. And that takes uh, quite a lot of work for you to go back and forth. So you need to find a way to actually uh, insert your keys or delete keys in a better way. Um, so there's two scripts that I would like you to install. So scripts in Maya, you can actually install them via the script editor. Uh, so if you actually open your script editor, um, you can have your scripts here running all good, Bob's your uncle. But you can also map a script to a key. Uh, you can actually go to this other tab called run, time, um, run command editor. Um, and this is basically that. It's basically you put a script here and you assign it to a key and then that script happens. So this, these two scripts are by Aaron Corosso. Um, he created this way back early 2000s when uh, most people didn't have like animation tool belts for all kinds of stuff like there is now. So uh, he's really, really talented, Aaron, and incredibly thankful for all the scripts that he has created. I'll link down below where you can download them. Now, what you wanna do is basically select everything from the script, copy, go back to your Maya, and paste that script into this, um, this window. Select Mel, because this is uh, old school, before Python, and uh, type your script. Name your uh, script correctly so you understand it. In this case, ACK delete key. You can add all this stuff if you want to your description. You don't have to. Um, and then save runtime command. So this basic this script is now saved up. Now I want you to do that again and copy the same thing on ACK slice curves. Uh, add that to this once again. Uh, add the name ACK slice curves to your name so you are able to find it again and you can add the description to here in case you have many scripts going on and you can find it in the future. Save runtime command and then runtime command has been saved. Now in order for you to actually add those to the keyboard you basically go to runtime command 
here, search by, and then you search for the names that you just saved. So the name of the first one was ACK delete key, right? So ACK delete, uh, you start writing it, it shows up because you just added it, and then you map it to your keyboard. So I'm gonna map it to B and N. V right now is free from my standpoint as an animator. I'll tell you what I'm gonna to add to V in a second, but I'm gonna map it to B because that's the way I like it. It will tell you the same prompt. Something is mapped to this, in this case, soft select, sticky, press. Um, I'm, once again, we don't model, so this is fine. Press yes, save. Now we're gonna search for the other script that we have added. And in this case it was ACK slice curves, this one here. So we're gonna map this one to uh, N. And same prompt, you say yes, save. So those two scripts allow you to actually kind of uh, delete keys and slice curves. I'll explain to you guys how to use them in the next video. Now, let's uh, add our last, um, our last key, and that is spline. So let's go into, once again, to the hotkey editor. So what we want is basically spline. So we're gonna go into application command, spline. So you see here, tangent spline. That's what the, the one we want, tangent spline. So that's it. That is actually all the tips that I had for you guys when it comes to actually adding shortcuts in the most basic way possible. Um, and is this setup that has uh, been uh, super useful to me no matter the environment or animation that I'm working on. So I hope it's as useful to you guys as it is for me on a daily basis as I animate. Um, those two scripts by Aaron are incredibly useful and I'm always using them no matter where I work. All the shortcuts that I showed you guys on this video will translate really well into the next video where I will show you guys how I use that in the graph editor in order to actually shape my curves and get the most out of it and be as fast as I can. That's all I had for you guys. I hope you guys enjoy the rest of the week and until then, as always, stay well, stay safe. Peace.